how China and Russia will put the USA and Europe in recession soon. The imminent demise of the dollar has been foreseen by analysts. The US dollar is the primary currency used in most international transactions. Yet Russia and China are attempting to challenge the supremacy of the dollar. They aim to remove the dollar from their economies. How precisely does that operate? Trade is typically the initial step. All imports and exports are now valued in US dollars. Each and every goods, including fuel, clothing, and automobiles, is tied to the US dollar. China and Russia both desire to trade in their national currencies, the yuan and the ruble respectively. The US dollar has dominated global trade for many years, and as a result, the US government now has unprecedented authority over every nation on earth. Even China cannot escape the influence of the dollar in our global economy. Yet over the past few months, something really intriguing has been emerging. The value of the US dollar has soared to its greatest level in years. All while the euro, the yen, the pound, the Japanese yen, and even the Chinese renminbi have fallen to new lows. According to the Bloomberg story, a strong dollar is causing turmoil around the world. But things are about to change because China and Russia have a long-term strategy to lessen dollar hegemony and allow other currencies to take their place. The US dollar has a 71% market share among the currencies used as global reserve in 1999. But in the last 10 years, it has decreased to 59. And if China and Russia's strategy is successful, a new global reserve currency may develop in the following 10 years. What then is Russia's and China's grand strategy to stop the supremacy of the US dollar? And what are the best ways to protect your investments in this historically turbulent period of international conflict? We must first comprehend why the US dollar is so strong and why it has monopoly status among reserve currencies in order to comprehend this China-Russian approach. The US dollar is a currency of trust, thus that is the first justification. Let's imagine that two arbitrary nations like Peru and Nigeria desire to engage in trade. Both countries would prefer to use a more stable currency for international trade because their domestic currencies could vary dramatically. As the US dollar is less erratic and more stable, both nations can feel more at ease conducting commerce. The majority of global trade is transacted in US dollars, or about 80%. The fact that you can only buy oil from Saudi Arabia with US dollars is the second factor that most nations favor. The United States and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia struck a strategic agreement in 1945 that stipulated Saudi Arabia would only trade its most valuable product in US dollars in exchange for US protection. The SWIFT banking system, which was developed following World War II and today controls all global financial transactions, is the last justification. SWIFT is currently used in more than 200 nations and 11,000 organizations worldwide. Nonetheless, the level of hostility between the United States, China, and Russia is rising quickly. The United States is under fire from China for its support of Taiwan, while Russia is currently the target of the most international sanctions. Russia cannot use its holdings of US dollars because it has been sanctioned by the US. Also, the majority of Russian businesses and institutions have been cut off from the SWIFT network limiting their ability to conduct business abroad. The West thinks that by continuing to isolate and sanction Russia, Putin would finally end his conflict with Ukraine. Yet Russia has a strategic edge that makes it more difficult for this to happen. Russia is one of the biggest producers of oil and gas in the globe, giving it significant influence over Europe and the rest of the world. Putin is therefore requiring countries to buy rubles in order to acquire oil and gas from Russia despite the fact that Saudi Arabia and other nations sell their energy using dollars. Hence, despite the fact that European nations have banded together and supported Ukraine in this continuing war, many of them have had to swallow their pride and simultaneously buy Russian rubles to pay for oil and gas. China has its own leverage through the Belt and Road Initiative as well. The $3.2 trillion China Bridge Initiative involves China making large loans to several nations across the world. The BRI project of China has been so influential in shaping the future of our planet that 165 nations worldwide presently owe $385 billion in debt to it. Now that some of these nations have accumulated excessive debt, they are in a tough position to repay it. 42 countries owe China loans that are greater than 10% of their GDP, according to a recent analysis. Now that China has such significant leverage, it has a fantastic chance to alter the course of the world's reserve currency. China might start requesting that these countries take loans in Chinese Yuan, 
rather than US dollars in order to encourage more of these countries to utilize the Chinese currency when trading. China might offer incentives to nations by reducing their debt by 1% in order to encourage them to select this course of action. We'll see how this works out in practice. As an illustration, consider Pakistan, which currently owes China more than $24 billion. For Pakistan, a 1% discount on $24 billion would be tremendous, and China has been preparing for this move for a long time. As of 2018, the Pakistani bank has permitted trading with China without a base. The enormous shift in world trade during the past 30 years completes this riddle. Only a few nations in Africa and the Middle East ranked China as their top commercial partner around the beginning of the century. Today, the majority of the globe still depends on China and views it as their largest and most significant trading partner. Hence, China may persuade numerous nations to utilize the renminbi instead of the US dollar by combining its debt and trade. Now, the fact that the majority of these countries with debts to China are either extremely poor or emerging nations is one of the major objections of this proposed strategy. What about Europe's and other US allies' large superpower economies? Is there a risk that China may use its clout to convince some of the world's largest and most potent economies to start utilizing more Chinese renminbi? With the help of bilateral currency exchange arrangements, China has a chance. Similar arrangements have also been made in recent months when Indian businesses exchanged US dollars for Asian currencies to buy Russian coal. And this is exactly what a bilateral currency swap agreement is, in case you've never heard of one. A simple currency transfer between two central banks is the essence of the arrangement. In order to provide the nation and local businesses with short-term liquidity in foreign currencies, the central banks take the proceeds of this swap and distribute them to commercial banks operating within their economy. What benefits come with these currency exchange arrangements, you might be wondering. One of the biggest is that neither nation needs to use the US currency to trade anymore, and this is where things really become interesting. More than 40 nations around the world have bilateral currency swap agreements with China's government, totaling more than 3 trillion UN dollars. Furthermore, noteworthy is the fact that China and Russia have been hoarding gold for the past 10 years, a revelation that has largely gone unreported by the majority of Western media. China has been acquiring more gold from Russia as well, with imports rising by an unprecedented 750% in the month of July alone. In the previous two months, China has bought almost 112 tons of gold alone. This is a huge issue because there have been suggestions that Beijing and Moscow may eventually connect their current currencies to gold, just as the US did when Richard Nixon devalued the US currency in 1971. You see, the dominance of the dollar indirectly denotes the dominance of America. It offers the United States significant power over other economies through sanctions, interest rate increases, and monetary tightening. The dollarization can stop this from happening and lessen America's influence on the world economy. That's all. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel and ring the bell icon to get more videos.